Sometimes, Blue Jay can be a little bit stubborn. For example, you all have been telling me for months that I just need to get a bunch of TNT and blow up this mountain, and I said no! I'm gonna dig every single block out by hand. So today, we're gonna go get a bunch of TNT and blow up this mountain. But let's just take a minute here to appreciate all the work that I've put into this. This is how it started, and this is how it's going. We're 90% there. And even Prowl, during his little subathon thing that's been going on for about, I don't know, 11, 12 days at this point, one of his requirements was to do me a huge favor, and he has been working on digging some of this out for me. And even at that, we're still a long way away from finishing this, but I think setting up some strategic TNT points on this mountainside is gonna speed up the process. The only real downside that I can see to this is now I don't know what I'm gonna do with all of these uh, your diamonds chat is mean diamonds. The first thing I have to do is change the name. The easiest way to take care of that problem is to turn them into blocks of diamonds to get rid of this nonsense. Unfortunately, I'm four diamond blocks short of what I wanted to do. I suppose I could chip in a little bit of my own. However, Prowls let me know he still owes me like 700 diamonds. Prowl seems to think that I should give some of these back to him just to be nice, but I've never had a diamond beacon base before, so... Decisions, decisions. I guess I'm really not using these two. Maybe I could give them to Prowl. I don't know about you, but I feel that was more than generous. The perfect gift. So let's talk about TNT. You need four stacks of sand and five stacks of gunpowder to craft TNT. It's very, very expensive. And I've almost got a full shulker of it. Thank you again to Prowl and his generosity, or should I say his stream chat and their generosity. Uh, they've actually made him do all of this stuff for me, and it's been very, very helpful, I'm not gonna lie. And I think I'm gonna be just shy of a full shulker. That's it, I'm, I'm completely out of sand now. And we are just two and a little bit under a half stacks of TNT short. I do think that's going to be more than enough for what I'm gonna do today. But hey, maybe we'll make a trip to a desert or tear apart a beachfront or something like that if we need some more. Before you start blowing stuff up in your survival world, it's important to know a little bit how this works so you don't risk blowing up your builds. When you place a piece of TNT, it doesn't do anything. It just sits there until it is activated. You can activate it with things like flint and steel, an arrow fired from a bow with the flame enchantment, or even something as simple as a button. Once a TNT is lit, it will count down until the ticks are at zero on the TNT, and then it will cause an explosion, and the damage done by that explosion is determined by the blast resistance of the blocks around it. So for example, dirt and grass have a much lower blast resistance than something like stone, and even stone has a slightly lower blast resistance than things like deep slate. Essentially what that means, the lower the blast resistance, the higher the damage, and the larger the crater it's going to create. So I can end up setting up something like this in my world, and at the press of a button I can launch some TNT and blow up a decent amount of land fairly quickly. This isn't going to matter much for my purposes today day because I don't have that far to dig, but it's good to know that TNT can only fall about 88 blocks and then it will blow up before even hitting the ground. And that's about the maximum vertical distance before the TNT just becomes ineffective and you got to move your machine down. Again, not really going to affect what I'm doing today, but if you're digging a huge hole in the ground, you may have to build a couple of these and lower them as you go. Back over in the Bedrock Guide world, I'm ready to start setting this up. And as you can see, we've already got a decent amount of this dugout, so it's not going to take too much more to get this to the ground, but I'm going to start by going up about six blocks above the ground and then I'm going to put a downward facing dispenser right here and I'm actually going to move this over by a couple of blocks. This should be more than fine three blocks away from the edge. Now this is important as well. I'm going to take four pieces of wool on the side of this dispenser and then place another dispenser right here. They have to be four blocks apart for maximum efficiency. If you got a bigger space, it's going to take more dispensers and more TNT, which could end up being more costly for you, 
which is why I would recommend a gunpowder farm and a good shovel to go sand mining. If you spread these out by five blocks apart or more, you're gonna end up leaving gaps between the TNT explosions and have to dig those out manually anyway. So four blocks apart is where you wanna go. I now have a four by four grid of dispensers and this is about as big as I would wanna go, at least for now. You could make this as large as you want to as long as the redstone can reach each of the dispensers. And the reason I say this is about as large as I would wanna go is because then you're gonna have to start putting repeaters into the mix and timings with repeaters and making sure TNT doesn't blow up and push another TNT where you don't want it to go it could just get a little bit more complicated. So this four by four grid should get you everything you need. And I'm just gonna start here right in this middle section and I'm gonna put down one button. And then I'm just gonna run redstone over to each of these dispensers. And in fact, you don't even have to go all the way to the dispenser. You can just power the block right next to it and that should get the job done. So the two furthest dispensers away from this button right here are in that corner and that corner. So if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This will get powered. And then same thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And this one will get powered as well. Every single dispenser in this grid will get power when I press this button and should drop TNT in a nice big square pattern. All right, who's ready to push the button? Every single dispenser has a full stack of TNT and I don't think we're gonna need all of this. This is what, maybe 15 to 20 levels that we're gonna have to bring it down to here? Not a big deal at all. So let's see how it works. I'm gonna go ahead and press this button and you should see some pretty magical things happening. Sorry, Mr. Cow, over there. Hopefully you're not disturbed. Oh yes, incredible. Not so incredible, it blew up my wool. So I am gonna have to fix that really quick, but hopefully uh, that's the last time that's gonna happen. Oh, I built it too low to the ground. See, this is why you should double check your math. Thankfully, with the 1.21 update, we now have 100% TNT drops in Bedrock Edition, which means everything that gets blown up by TNT will drop onto the ground. So I didn't lose any of my redstone, didn't lose any of my wool. I just have to go down and pick it up. This could be a really interesting mechanic for future farms. And I do have some ideas in mind that we're gonna put over there at some point, but that's a project for another day. Okay, is everything wired back up? It does appear to be fixed. Here we go. More TNT. Ow. <laughs> Okay, perfect. It didn't blow up my contraption. I just built it one block too low. We're good. I am slightly concerned it's not close enough to the edge, but I think we're gonna be okay. Let's just keep an eye on it. We'll monitor it as we go down. Oh no, it's not getting that right there. Okay, so this is kind of the nature of a beast like this. You're gonna get most of your terraforming, but eventually you're probably gonna run into a situation where you're gonna have to do just a little bit of manual digging, but this whole section right here that we've blown up, all of this probably would have taken me, I don't know, 20 minutes to a half an hour to dig by hand. And this contraption took me like five minutes to set up and it's gonna take me five minutes to burn through this TNT and get it down to ground level. So it's gonna save a ton of time. I should have listened to you guys months ago. One thing I probably should mention as well, TNT is a huge world lag issue. So if you're on a lower end device, you probably could still get away with doing 16 TNT at once, but I wouldn't go crazy with this and do like 50 or 100 or more. You might end up locking up your world and causing issues. Just be careful with how many of these things you build. And with that, I think we are down. Oh, almost to ground level. I think we can do one more explosion and then do a little bit of cleanup and then all I gotta do is move this machine and keep going. Oh, this is such a time saver. Blue Jay is a very, very happy camper. Now, I don't wanna go any lower because this is actually now going into territory of blowing up further down than I wanted to dig, but that's okay. A little bit of cleanup is not bad. Just a quick progress update in spectator mode here. I have already cycled through this machine three times and I'm about to move it over for the fourth, but I do have to be a little bit careful because we're gonna be hugging the side of this mountain and I don't wanna blow up any of this because there's still some shaping that I wanna do after this is all done. But 
My goal is to blow up everything back to about where that wool is back here, because the rest of this we can pretty much flatten out by hand and maybe slope it up a little bit. And then I also want to bring the TNT machine over this direction. And again, a lot of this is already pretty low to the ground. There's not a whole lot left to do in the way of land clearing, which is really nice because then we can get to the really fun stuff. And that's filling this entire space with buildings and trees and whatever else we can put in here. It's going to be amazing and progress complete. There's still some terraforming that I want to do and some cleanup from TNT explosions on the side of the mountain. So that's not fully finished just yet, but the general shape is there and everything that I want to clear out is cleared out. And I want to talk about this space specifically here. And oh my goodness, we already have some friends in the next episode. I'm going to be building a sheep farm over here because I need plenty of wool for infrastructure blocks for redstone contraptions and I want to mark out some buildings and some sidewalks with various colors of wool so we can start pre-planning the rest of this city and that way it'll go up a little bit quicker than things have been going because it's been a little bit slow going but we're getting there this whole area is going to be an agricultural space probably some crop farms some animal farms maybe we'll replace the villager breeder up there with a villager crop farm I'm not sure yet we'll have to see but we're making some pretty great progress on this base I've still got some buildings Building to do. And speaking of building, I did mention in the previous episode that we were going to be doing the storage room for today's episode, and I've kind of pushed those plans back. It's a little bit ambitious to do without a good source of redstone and a good source of wool to line everything out. And not to mention this room is not done yet. We still have to finish building in here. So we put that on pause for today and it'll be another episode or two before we get back to the storage room. But it is coming very soon and I've got some cool plans in mind for it. And I know today's episode is a little bit shorter and we've got a little extra time. And you know what we haven't done for a while? We haven't pranked Prowl. Listen, I was never here. You got it? Don't tell Prowl. <laughs>